Hello everyone, it's Alberto. I'm in Berlin. We are at Eve Audio headquarters and we have Roland Stenz. Hi Roland. Hi, welcome. And uh, we're here, you probably know why, because lately, you should know, I've done a review of the 2070, the SC2070 new speaker line as well that came out. And I really like the speaker and I thought I could read about what makes it unique because I had some questions, but then I said, no, I live very close by. So I would visit, you know, Eve audio headquarters and ask Roland directly. He's the CEO, founder, inventor of these, like designer and everything. And uh, but we're going to record it. That's the best thing because then, you know, people like you can join us and have the answers on video. It's nothing better than that. So Roland, thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. I wanted to ask you the first thing, like right off the bat, yeah. you look at the speaker, mm -hmm. you don't know anything about speakers except the make sound and you know, yeah. you yeah. listen to your music. But the tweeters are very unique. There's yes. nothing I've seen in the line here yeah. that is on any other monitor for studio and loudspeaker that I've tried. So now there are some brands um, that do the, something the, similar, yeah, yeah. but the, they're kind of like that strikes your attention right yes, off the bat, especially yeah. the larger ones because mm -hmm. they get mm -hmm. you know, yeah, larger yeah. than what normally you would see. So this is a unique uh, situation. What what okay. we have here is a different size. It's right. a tweeter. Is it correct to say yes. it's a tweeter? Yes, it's a, it's a tweeter. It's an air motion transformer, and the principle is uh, different uh, to a normal dome driver. What what we have, and um, I can show you a normal dome driver. This is such a small device this year, in this case, with a fabric diaphragm. And this um, fabric diaphragm is surrounded by a voice coil. And this voice coil is running in a very um, strong magnetic field. So mm -hmm. if uh, the music signal with the current goes through the voice coil, then the voice coil is moving in this magnetic field. And you have a one-to-one -one ratio between the voice coil and the diaphragm because the diaphragm is directly connected to the voice coil. Um, you can imagine uh, it is, uh, yeah, it is like this case. Mm -hmm. So my hands in this case, or in this uh, example are the motors, and then you have the motor and the motor drives the diaphragm one to one. And um, the idea with the air motion transformer is to have a different diaphragm construction. So here you have a uh, diaphragm mm -hmm. and you see it's a yellow a diaphragm material. It's cupped on. It's a very stiff and um, yeah, very stable um, diaphragm material. And you see it's covered by some aluminum bars. And mm -hmm. through this aluminum bars, the current goes through in uh, two directions. And then the diaphragm is folded like this and um, you see here a folded diaphragm of the largest uh, air motion transformer what we have developed and the folds are or the walls of the folds are moving to each other so you see here um, uh, the wall construction and if I look only to one fold then we have a um, movement like this. Ah, okay. So That's the current okay. through the aluminum bars goes up and down in opposite direction of the um, uh, folds of the wall. Then we have a very strong magnetic field in this direction. And then um, from the lowest Lorentz law, the um, walls are moving um, against each other. They're compressing and yes, expanding. Yes. So air in between all yes, this gets expanded. Yes. And you have a speed transformation between the speed of the wall and the airspeed, what you can have uh, through the walls. It's like um, your breath is, is, mu uh, is moving very, very slowly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the airspeed, what you can uh, have through your mouth, right. um, it's, right, right. it's much um, higher. This is the main um, difference in the um, construction of um, the tweeter. And there are some advantages um, um, for an air motion transformer. If we go back to the uh, normal dome driver, mm -hmm. then you have a diaphragm and the diaphragm is surrounded by the voice coil. I have only two hands. And if you move it very slowly, then you can say the diaphragm is following the motor, the voice coil. Right. But if you speed up uh, the, the speed, then as the diaphragm starts to be unstable. Okay. And this is a disadvantage. So there's uh, all sorts of yes. discrepancies. Yeah. It doesn't look as coherent. It's no longer yes, one yes. thing. Yes, okay. yes. So and in this case, to higher frequencies, um, 
the distortion rises up. And then if you have a metal dome driver, this is a fabric dome driver. Mm -hmm. And if you have a metal dome driver, then you have also a quite huge resonance peak. So around 18 to 22 kilohertz. Okay. And it's a kind of taste. It's the same be, uh, with the woofer, the diaphragm material. What you can use, you can use a metal diaphragm also in the woofer section or fabric or whatever paper cone. So and this is um, oh, this all. All these diaphragm materials has advantages and has disadvantages, and a designer has to de find the best compromise right. for for them. That's always like the best, yes. obviously. There's no way around that. You gotta yes. work with the whole of the thing. You can't make perfect materials yes. and stuff. Yes. You know, you work with yeah. what's available. So, and coming back true. to the diaphragm mm -hmm. um, of an air motion transformer, you see the bars are covering the and en the entire di diaphragm area. Mm -hmm. So the motor is. Um, is uh, built by the aluminium bars and now you can say that the motor is a diaphragm itself. Okay. When I do the example with my with my hand then you see I can yeah, move yeah. my hands and the diaphragm between my hands has no chance to break up to yeah, yeah. Uh, fold or like yes, microscopic. It's much more of a coherent yes, yes. piece of body which is important for high frequencies yeah. or, you know all kind of translation yes. to the uh, you know sort of Kinetic and this is a, the main uh, the main advantage of an air motion transformer. The disadvantage is, of course, it's much more um, uh, expensive in, in to build. building. <laughs> so it's also it's done by hand, right? Yes, parts yeah. It's, uh, it, the yeah. folds are the folds made are by hand, and the, uh, of, that's not easy to mm -hmm. to um, have an automatic uh, production line for that. But it sounds good. It sounds good for sure. I mean, I tried it, and yeah. what I was amazed at is that on the twenty seventy. When I looked at the product line, for it being such a kind of small format speaker, the AMT, the Air Motion Transformer, the tweeter, the tweeter yeah. belt, it's kind of bigger than, for example, what you have here. Yeah. Which was the thing of the last line, right? Yes. You made a sort of a bigger ratio for the tweeter. It's it's got a bit more surface, a one point one and a half times. Yeah, one one point eight. Okay, one point eight, so yes, even more yes. than what it would seem to be required from the previous stuff you've done. And this is what I've loved the most, the crossover drops very low, yes, right? Yes. So it's a two-way, but yeah. there's like a 1,800 hertz for crossover point. So that means that you're completely free of typical crossover issues in frequencies that are very, very yeah. problematic yeah. already for different reasons, especially yeah. in digital audio. Yeah. So. This you did last, right? Yes. I think this is the first one you developed. Yeah, this is one of the first ones. So you see, the, you see it here. Um, the there are now um, three different variations available. Okay. So we started. Um, um, yeah, but the construction is similar, and um, the diaphragm also is. Um, it has the same size uh, through, okay. uh, through these uh, three variations. Um, but the construction behind is a little bit different. So magnet size and damping um, is a little bit different to, to have a um, different behavior from tweeter to tweeter. But you see here um, our four um, tweeter sizes, what we have regarding the diaphragm size. Mm -hmm. And um, for the SC203, we needed to have a very small air motion transformer. You can imagine if you would uh, place such a big unit uh, in such small cabinet, it is completely to off. handle. So, yeah, yeah, ratio and it, sort of. And it was really a challenge to develop this uh, very small air motion transformer mm -hmm. because you have to find a uh, lowest as possible crossover frequency. Right. And you have to um, have a very compact uh, construction. Right. And this was nearly. Uh, yeah, like not the to solve point, so, exactly. so exactly. easy. So and in the end, we we have here a very small air motion transformer, and in combination with a small woofer, we can uh, we could lift up the crossover frequency to three kilohertz. So okay. it was not a problem. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a th uh, three-inch woofer, and a three-inch woofer with this uh, dedicated uh, diaphragm material yeah, and a, a low uh, distortion um, construction can handle yeah, that. Yeah. Definitely a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny to I mean you when you start working with people who develop loudspeakers like you do, you learn that every it's a beautiful sort of environment to study and design stuff because you see people like you that have to cope with every sort of like part of the domino effect. You mm, do yeah. one change, 
Like for somebody like me, I mean, now I understand, but initially you're like, well, you develop one, you multiply yeah. it by two, you're done. You put it in a bigger speaker that is twice as big as the other one. It's going to do the same thing. It's never going to work. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why when you build your own cabinets for guitars as well, some people do it in, it's not going to work. It's not as easy. There's a lot of, it's, it's called physics and it's it involved is, it, in this it stuff. It's well. physics you can't and escape it, it. Yeah. And this is, uh, yeah. One side is physics and the other side is psych uh, psychologic. Uh, yeah, issues what, what well. you have. So, exactly. and for example, if you compare this big one, the SC3012 with a 12 inch woofer and the mm -hmm. SC203, um, uh, then you have a um, complete different uh, low end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so of course, the um, 3012 uh, goes much yeah, lower in both. comparison to the SC203. And the problem is, if If you have a speaker, such small speaker, mm -hmm. without really low frequencies, the uh, minus 3 dB point is around uh, 60 hertz with this uh, okay. speaker. So it's quite low for the, such small mm -hmm. speaker. But if really the low bass is not existing or mm -hmm. not emitting, then immediately our brain is... Feels completely different. Feels or makes the lower mid-range more audible in your brain. Right. So and then you have such ugly mid-ranged focus yeah. uh, like unit and filtering stuff. So exactly. and yeah and and this is uh, speaker of course what I don't want to show. So it was very tricky to to get from the physical impression or for the uh, psychological impression the same uh, behavior like a larger speaker without the bass. Right? Yeah, this yeah. is not tricky. And the opposite is here with the larger speaker. If you have a very uh, boomy uh, speaker with a lot of bass. To feel um, scooped, yeah, or and to to and to uh, check uh, classical music, for example, mm -hmm. where are the violins? Where are the, um, the the violins or the lower part of the violins? And you have so much bass. Yeah, the organ is press, uh, mm -hmm. is pressing, and then you have oh, where are the cello, mm, the violins? Uh, yeah, different so it's different a, it's game. design so, thing. You can't tell somebody, well, look, it's technically perfect. The graph says it's okay. So yeah. here's your speaker. Yeah. Because ultimately you have to make decisions when you're working. These are, you know, reference monitors. So you got to use them as references to monitor yeah. the music. Yeah. So, you know, and then the translation issue is always there. That's the thing. Like, how do they translate? If I get used to these and then I go in my car, because every, I know you, you go in your car <laughs> and listen to your music and then decide whether or not it's the next hit. But it's part of what people do. So to have that room in which everything sounds perfect and then nothing else works outside is always the problem. And the psychological effect yeah, is yeah. really, really big. And it's here in smaller speakers yeah. more than people think because you think like this is the real challenge. Yeah, this so is where they spend Surprisingly, in the end, this was from the adjustment, this was the most complicated mm -hmm, speaker. Mm -hmm. So when you, you think, ah, oh, such a small speaker, okay, it's easy done, but um, there is a lot of effects. And um, what people often don't know there is also another very important uh, issue it's uh, directivity mm -hmm. you know? and um, you can you can measure a uh, loudspeaker in, uh, in an anechoic chamber what we also have mm -hmm. and then you have a flat frequency response every speaker sounds flat frequency good for marketing so you can say here i have a hmm. mm -hmm. so and then in the end uh, you And then if you do a lot of off-axis measurements or you go in an echo chamber, what we also, what we also have, a huge echo mm -hmm. chamber, and if you do an uh, energy measurement of the speaker, then they are so different in an area between yeah, 1 to 5 uh, kilohertz up to 10, 12 dB. And this is the energy amount what goes uh, not on axis, what goes to other directions and it comes back from reflections from the wall, from the ceiling, from the uh, uh, ground. And this is um, indeed also yeah. A you problem. still pick it up. Our brain picks yes. it up. Our yes. ears pick it up and make us do adjustment for yeah. what we feel in the so, music. Yeah. And um, regarding the size of the tweeter, you, you mentioned already the SE 2070. Um, when we have an uh, um, a system with a dedicated mid-range unit, then we can lift up the crossover frequency um, for the tweeter because. For a tweeter, um, it's important not to have to emit too low frequencies, otherwise the ex uh, distortion explodes. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's always a compromise. For a two-way system like this, um, a 7-inch or 6.5-inch driver can handle 
in a good way, mm -hmm. 2 kilohertz, 2.5 kilohertz. Okay. But above that, then uh, distortion starts yeah. and it's not really um, good behavior. And also mm -hmm. the directivity is going, um, or it's very it's close. Good. Yeah. And, and if you have an 8-inch woofer, 208, SE208, for example, uh, from us, Uh, then it is, from my opinion, a, a two-way system with an 8-inch woofer or with a 10-inch woofer, it starts to be a compromise. That is also the reason why you will not find so much mm -hmm. uh, two-way systems where uh, a 10-inch woofer is combined with, with only tweeter. one yeah. um, air motion transformer or one, one tweeter. So, True that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then we have the SE207 or here the um, SE4070. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a four-way system. Filter-wise, it's a three-way system. And, um, and here we can have the small unit because the crossover frequency is high enough to um, have the best compromise regarding distortion and directivity. Here with our new SE2070, um, the idea was to have a better mid-range resolution in comparison to SC207. Uh, Because in the SC207 we use the same tweeter diaphragm uh, size and, mm -hmm. and we cannot uh, couple this tweeter lower than yeah, 2.6, uh, 2.8 kilohertz. Okay. So, and this is possible, mm -hmm. but it's uh, from, uh, from the idea to provide the best solution um, then a lower crossover point yeah. is needed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this was yeah, the yeah. idea to develop uh, the new air motion transformer. And this has a 1.5 larger diaphragm um, size in comparison mm -hmm. to the um, uh, tweeter from the normal or yeah, standard yeah. SC series. And then we have here an even a larger um, air motion transformer to um couple this was in five inch exactly uh, because this is gonna go lower in mid everything is being yes, scaled down yes, and then yes, over so it yes. makes sense uh, when it's and this is a uh, five uh, sorry in four inch mid-range you need this is a five inch so to have more exactly. sound pressure energy um, and to have um, a better directivity in combination with the woofer this woofer runs up to uh, 200 hertz and then the mid-range have to take over And then um, here the crossover frequency is 1.2 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kilohertz, something like that, or 1.4. Nice. Yeah, it's very, very low. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. this air motion, you could also uh, combine this air motion transformer with this speaker, but then you have a cabinet size yeah. quite, uh, quite high. The, and uh, exactly. this is, uh, that makes no That's sense. That's the domino effect yeah. I was referring to. Yeah. Like, you know, see, now there's like the form factor. Things don't fit anymore, like physically. They might work together, but the two components have to be housed somewhere. And this is why it's amazing. I mean, speakers, you just have to work really hard, you know, from zero to 100% yeah, yeah. to get it done. And then there's, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, and then there's also simply another reason it is fun to me to develop an air motion transformer. Or yeah, yeah, speaker, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm speaker designer. It's uh, really, it, um, yeah, it's, it's fun to, to get better results and different exactly. results. And um, always, because yeah. it sounds better and it's just yeah, better, yeah. right? This is a three-way system. I had a question about this. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, you might also want to ask this because people usually. I had people who ask me. Yeah, that. it's it's a question how to to um, people say some from the amplifiers. This is a four-way system, so exactly. every driver has its own amp. Um, amp. From the filter, it's a three-way uh, system. Okay. Yeah, both uh, woofers are running in in one frequency range, mm -hmm. and then the uh, mid-range takes over and the tweeter. Right, and on. these can obviously rotate it yes, so that you yes, can place yes. them horizontally or yes, yes. depending on this that. Is, um, yeah. This is indeed the case and the same is here. And also, that was I was going to ask, because right? it looks yeah. similar, you can do that as well. So yeah, you, you can, can do, do that as well and then you have a, a um, not so um, high uh, yeah, construction of footprint. So yeah. and, uh, sometimes if you put such speaker on a meter bridge, uh, then it's quite high and then it makes sense yeah. or for center, um, it makes sense to turn it by 90 degrees and then you have an horizontally cut even on stands personally yeah. sometimes i mean you gotta try it right yeah, because yeah. sometimes in a room it doesn't make sense maybe but mm -hmm. it will sound better in one configuration or the yeah, other yeah. there's rooms in which i've seen them use the horizontal all the time and ask and say like well in theory we should place them like this but we try them horizontally and it works yeah, yeah. Uh, or the other way around and the same mm -hmm. is true here so yeah i It's really, really 
cool how this revolves around this AMT, which is, you know, the newer thing. And I think what I really liked about the speakers, this is going into the personal mode, is that I have now probably two pairs of speakers, but one is more for the cinematic kind of mm -hmm. old school way of doing orchestral stuff. And the other one's just two ways shelf speaker on yeah. a table, right? This feels the in between mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. So it was not a sort of like halfway compromise. It was actually reaching from where one set of speakers, you know, works for me in some yeah, parts yeah. up to the other. So it was really encompassing both of them. And I was surprised, I used the term cinematic in, this, mm. in the review, which might throw some people off, like, what is this, like, for movies or for games? Or It really has this all-around-you kind of effect, which is probably, again, I mean, the technique of how high frequencies are, you know, yeah. getting broadcasted to you in, you know, in conjunction with the woofers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and I, in, in general, um, I don't want to have an... Uh, compromise. So in the end, the adjustment of the whole system regarding the frequency response, direct mm -hmm. activity, is a kind of mastering process. Yeah, we can we can exactly. uh, we can use our measurement tools in the unicoid chamber. Flat frequency responses is, is quite yeah. easy to do for an yeah. experienced engineer. But to have the right sound impression mm -hmm. with different uh, music, this is exactly. another ball game. And then you have to sit there and uh, to adjust. Um, in very yeah small yeah. level areas and uh, and then this is um, the complicated part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if you are not experienced for example with different kind of music then you are lost to um, to make good speakers yeah so, that's uh, what I did I listened to stuff I know very well yeah and then a deadline came that I wasn't yeah. expecting because it was a like, sort of a week or two in which I had no music to compose or stuff and then obviously changed yeah, and yeah. I had the speakers on the table and I was like all right we do it you know I'm yeah, gonna yeah. use this I already knew part of the sketch I was writing so I knew how it sounded on the other systems and I was like all right trial by fire we do this you yeah, know and yeah. I worked on it and it sounded very relatable I don't know if that's a word like it you know I had them for a day or two mm -hmm. and it felt honestly just you know translating the way I would I would expect without switching from lower, you know, bigger or smaller yeah, speakers. Yeah. It just was all there, which is obviously more convenient, especially with the headphones market and people using mm -hmm. a lot of headphones and speakers. It just felt kind of right, even if it was, again, physical. Yeah, yeah. So there's no, you know, the Phantom Center stuff and everything worked really well. And also what people should say, which I think really, really worked, is they work at very low volume mm -hmm. and high volume as well. Yeah, yeah. So the bass is always kind of there, but also the highs, so the balance, I was really surprised about, okay, can they go loud? Yes, they can. But what if you go where people usually have, for example, I've been writing music more for video games. People don't usually blast the music while playing the game because they want to concentrate on yes. the sound effects. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some people put it off, don't put it off, because there's people working on music right now. But if you have it very low, and you've been mixing something extremely loud, then, and if you are in the audio lead part, which you have to produce everything, yeah, yeah. then it doesn't quite feel the same. So you want it to be enticing in the dynamic range. It's a lot of mixing stuff that doesn't have to do with loudspeakers, but then you want to feel how it is at low volume because mm -hmm. the scene, the music has to be there. It just gives you a better you know, experience. But if it's too dynamic, the speaker just loses power and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now you don't know if it's your mix or yeah, if it's yeah. the speaker dropping. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that completely, like, it, it takes hours to figure it out. Yeah, and, and this one, you know, the 2070s were really, really flat going down and up. I couldn't feel them shifting around. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's and, good. Um, and this is, this is a similar question to, to, um, to how to develop a speaker in a way should it be a good sounding speaker mm -hmm. or an accurate sounding speaker. Exactly. And this is quite different. And, and I think the answer is maybe it has to be a bit of both. Yeah. And to, right to make an, to make an uh, um, impressive sounding mm -hmm. speaker is, um, is a different thing. It's quite easy, a little bit more on the height, a little bit more in the uh, bass section, and um, then then it sounds impressive in the first moment. But then you st uh, after a time exactly. you say, oh, no. there's something missed. Or if you go to different types of music, um, Nora Jones sitting on a piano, and the exactly. distance between the singer and the piano is always changing because the speaker is not balanced. 
uh, yeah. then there's something wrong. And then the, the psychological effect, like when I switch to say, okay, now I'm working on my music because I have to yeah. give it tomorrow, it felt completely different. Because yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, yeah, yeah. well, one thing is to go through your playlist and go like, oh yeah, this is beautiful. And then it's like, okay, now it's work. Yeah. And so it felt almost like a different speaker. You go really, really microscopic yeah. on everything and stuff. And what I also really tried that this tweeter is not annoying to the ears. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is also a very important issue to me. Um, yeah, I, I don't like that if, if you cannot cannot sit for a long time mm -hmm. in front of a speaker and you, you get... Um, yeah, I'm, about, uh, exactly. I'm the typical or, uh, right yeah. typical person that says like, I don't sit in the studio for six hours straight. Yeah, and I realized I think I don't do it, but if I actually clock myself, yeah, I spend a lot of time sitting there because just you know time flies. You're doing many things, but I would say, well, I usually don't sit in the studio for six hours. Yeah, and then yes, even if I take breaks, you do. Yeah, in yeah. the end, you do because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. people want things done by yesterday, and you do. So yeah, it, yeah. if it gets annoying and too sharp, it will have an influence. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Also, another thing I really like, and you know, I'm digressing over the Twitter thing, is that personally, you, I think you did right in picking class D. Yeah. Amps. Is this for all the line? For yeah, or, yeah, or right. Yeah. So, but uh, when I started with Eve Audio, mm -hmm. it wasn't. Um, it was a big discussion to use I can um, imagine. class mm -hmm. D amps or even DSP was uh, were very uh, in, in discussion in this, uh, mm -hmm. in this time. And I did a lot of blind tests, double blind tests with different brands with um, and uh, try to find out something and uh, invited people and nobody knew which speaker are running. I had covered um, the stage mm -hmm. where the speakers were uh, placed. and. Yeah, in the end, everybody could uh, could tell about differences and had their own fav uh, favorites, uh, but nobody could huh. uh, could say this is analog or this is digital. Well, so, which is the DSP it, one? Yeah, and no, this it, um, this um, makes me sure that or makes Absolutely. me safe to um, yeah. go this yeah. goes way. But in the end, uh, in the begin of of um, Eve Auto, it was really a very a big decision. Yeah, to, I can't imagine because we had yeah, this discussion yeah. every time. I mean, yeah. I get people in the studio say, they they look at the floor standards and stuff. They say, "What amp do you have?" I was like, "You know, I have this and that." And they go like, "Ah, oh, class D." Ah, oh, no. Mm, yeah, no. Yeah. And I I love it. It just it has a feel, yeah, yeah, you know, a way yeah, of seeing throughout that for referencing. You know, if I was just in my living room yeah. sipping brandy, I don't know something fancy, it would be you know class A tubes, whatever. It's just yeah. perfect. But for monitoring and mastering and mixing and composing and stuff, you you know want to have a different have a thing. Lot, and I found that yeah. it works. And you have a lot of studios with a lot of analog gears, but they use uh, plugins as all the, the um, simulations or exactly. simulations uh, exactly. for these plugins. The other thing is the DSP that I read afterwards. Like, yeah. okay, there's this in the signal path, and usually I'm like, no, it should be a 100% analog. Yeah, yeah. But then you know, with ears, you ask yourself like, do I hear it? Like, is it really? You know, something that I can hear it latency wise, there's no mm. issues. No. The last question is going to be about immersive audio because everybody's talking about that. Would this 2070 be a right fit for Atmos, for example? Yes, yes. It's a very precise um, speaker, or even in the mid range, and it covers the uh, whole frequency range, what is needed, and this is a wonderful uh, speaker for that. 3,000 well. of them yes. just to get your feet wet in Atmos. Yeah, a globe full range. with uh, yeah, speakers. So, awesome. Yeah. Science fiction for sure. Yeah. The other thing that is amazing, nobody wants to reach out in the back of whatever, 7, 11, 100 speakers. Yes. Having these in the front from the broadcast people will learn that it's much easier to see where they are and they turn on by ramping up. Slowly. Yes. That's also great. Yes. And they remember the volume at which they wear. Right? Yeah. I noticed when I set it up. Yeah. This is great because you don't get blasted and they remember yes. the volume at which they wear. So your entire setup, if it's a 2.0 or if it's a you know 712, whatever, will remember all the balancing. Yes, yes. That's an easy way yeah. to, to protect your ears and um, not yeah. to run through your studio and to... Right, uh, yeah. Because uh, it keeps happening from time to time. Yes, you know? so yes. So people just rush it. Fortunately, not so often, but sometimes yeah. it can happen. And yeah, then it's, um, absolutely. Yeah. Also having the controls for the frequencies adjustments, yeah. frequencies, desk adjustments and stuff. In digital with the DSP, now it pays back even more because to go analog and say I'm maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.5 here, yeah. it looks like it's there, it's never gonna be precise. 
This one is, you know, two steps and a half digital. Yes, you, you can, can do it all. Yeah, all. It's very precise. Just gives a very different. And also, um, if you have on the right and left side um, the same settings in the in with, done with the knob, then it is really um, the same level of the speakers. And you can lock them. I think all yes, of these. Yes, you can. You can on the back side. You can lock the filter settings and the volume settings independently. Uh, for example, if you have you are happy with your um, setup uh, regarding the frequency response, then you lock the, the filter settings in the backside, and then it's uh, only possible to um, change the volume. To change the volume. Yeah, yeah. This this is, is, these yeah. are all nice features that you don't yeah, think yeah. about until you really need to say like, ah, somebody fiddled with yeah, it yeah. or accidentally or whatever. And it's so easy. You you uh, you try to grab an, uh, the power switch on the backside, and then you. Uh, you turn the knob uh, by accident, and then exactly you have a different sound. True, and so, and this it's much uh, safer, like yes, yeah, safer like headspace. We avoid somehow. that. Perfect. All right. So thank you very much for thank having you. me here. That was thank a privilege. Asking questions straight into the headquarters with the designer and creator. I mean, I'm glad we filmed this, so you also had this experience. Thank you very much for having me again. It was a pleasure. Until thank next you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.